Played really well in the first half. Um, had the advantage of watching LSU um, win their first two games uh, over Vanderbilt and Texas A&M. And then co coming in just prior to the game, we heard the final of the Kentucky Texas A&M game. And, you know, the, the LSU we, at Texas A&M obviously speaks volumes about uh, what kind of job Matt's done and, and, and how good that team is and, you know, just how good the league is, obviously. So the ability to get, you know, excited about playing every night, you know, I thought we did, I thought we did fairly well. Um, I thought we played good basketball in the first half. We shot it well. We turned them over. Um, and then in the second half, you know, obviously, you know, on the lead, um, we didn't play nearly as well. We only turned them over, th I think, three or four times in the second half. We sent them to the foul line way too much. And then up 28 with 11-34, you know, we only had three assists the rest of the way. Um, so it was a little bit of an opportunity to kind of, well, I can go ahead and get mine a little bit, and I'm going to take the first inside-out shot, and I'm going to take the first shot. And, 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 and that's one of the great challenges of playing 10 guys is – Nobody's going to be putting up big numbers when you're playing 10 guys on a regular basis. So it does kind of creep in there. They go home, they hear it from their parents, they hear it from their family. Why didn't you do this or why didn't you do that? And uh, we know why in our locker room. Um, and so that's something that we uh, um, can't be, can't, that can't be distraction. Um, the, uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful announcement tonight in our locker room. Carter Sabera earned a scholarship. Um, the, the celebration will be out on social media momentarily. Um, but, you know, I've always, almost always, I think maybe always, but almost always, put 12 guys on scholarship. Um, play 10 or 11. Just don't like having guys on scholarship that aren't playing. Sometimes it happens. Um, it allows me to be honest in recruiting and, 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 and try to recruit the right way. Um, and not have a bunch of guys sit on my bench that I promised minutes and roles too that I could not deliver uh, just to make sure that we had enough in case we get an injury or, or things like that. The fact that I also can have a scout team made up of, um, you know, Jalen Harper, um, Blake, um, Carter, uh, P, Hasty Cakes, a, uh, excuse me, a, AD is on scholarship and he's part of it as a five man. Um, um, every now and then, Lior goes down there and helps them. So getting ready for LSU, I, can, I don't have to go best on best. And I think that really helps us lock into our scouts and, and, and execute. Um, Ira Bowman, Coach Burgermaster had the scout tonight. I thought they both did an outstanding job. Coach, throughout that uh, 22, uh, uh, 21 to 2 run that LSU went on, you didn't call a timeout there. You just kind of let the guys play through it. Can you talk about the strategy behind that and what you were looking for from your team? Well, part of it is, you know, um, I don't want to call timeout, let them rest, and let, you know, let Matt get a hold of him and let him rest his guys in the sense that um, if, you know, Will Baker played 28, Jordan Wright played 36. Um, you know, I thought I thought that uh, we did a really nice job on Cook, um, but he had zero assists and five turnovers. He did a great job. Denver Jones has locked in the last two guards he has faced. Denver Jones has played against you know Taylor and Cook. Taylor Cook had 28, I think, against A and M. If Denver's not scoring. Might, could have been against Vanderbilt, but it was on those two schools. Denver's not getting a lot of shots. He needs. We need to get Denver Jones more shots. We need to do more from offensively. I'll tell you what. You talk about locking in. So therefore, if if, if Jordan Wright's going to play 36 minutes, I'm not going to call a timeout. Let him rest. Bruce, they had 17 turnovers, 16 steals. It's the most y'all had in an SEC game for four years. Just what was the key to? Getting the ball out out from them and, and, and turning those into points because well, you had a lot of those. Just had Ch have Chad Baker on the floor, and that's that's three or four before he even gets started, right? Just Chad's length and his IQ, and he's a problem out there. He, he do so, so versatile offensively. The fact that he knocked down three threes tonight, shot a good percentage. Um, I trust him as a playmaker. 
and obviously trust him defensively. And he does all that, you know. But he did get, he did manage to get, he got 27 minutes that I thought might be Chad's high, I think, in minutes played. Uh, but he's earned it. And um, um, LSU does turn it over. They do turn it over some. Like they force you into 15, 16. They themselves turn over 12 or 13. So they are a team that, that we knew we could, we could turn over. And Bruce Aiden said that that was pretty much the reason y'all won the game was the bench coming off and giving you the spark early, giving you the spark late. I guess just how much does that help your, your game planning throughout the 40 minutes to, to have the ability for them on both ends of the field? Yeah, well, I mean, it, 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 it's getting really obvious that our, our second group coming in um, is really effective defensively and turning people over and creating, you know, and, and playing with a different level of effort, energy, and effectiveness. Now, part of it is when that group comes in, the other team's starters are still in there, and they're fresh and furious, and they're able to make plays. That's part of what we try to do. Bruce, back here. Bruce, coach. <laughs> when, the one thing I noticed tonight is that more so, more often than normal, is every time this team hit a big shot, they played to the crowd, and the crowd gave them the energy that really kind of, it almost kind of helped they create that big gap in the first half. What can you say about this crowd, this energy, and how the players feed off of it? I mean, the crowd was great. Um, it, it always is. Um, I like the I like the guys to have fun. I don't I don't mind them celebrating. Um, they celebrate more than I do uh, because I'm older. Um, but I want them playing with passion. I want them having fun. I I I, I, I coach them hard. I work them hard. Uh, I have high expectations for them. I don't want to. I don't want to. I want, and I want them to have joy in the game. And obviously, they do really do respond to our crowd. At the same time, I want it to be sportsmanlike. Ryan, coach, uh, when you talk about Chad and what he was able to do defensively, he mentioned tonight that he feels really confident in the team, and he feels like the teamwork defensively and on the court is something that ex is exciting for him and is really developing. Uh, where do you see that right now, and, and how excited are you for where it's going? Well, I mean, and, and that could be infectious on the team. Like, how about some of the athletic plays Cheney Johnson made tonight? I mean, Cheney Johnson flying around out there. Obviously, KD uh, is a problem. You know, Dylan is, is such a great defender, protecting the rim and physically and doing it without getting fouled. So um, that group does that group does take a great deal of pride. And and and, 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 and and as a result, they're plus minus. You know, if you look at it, you know, Chad's plus twenty four, Katie's plus twenty three. Um, doing it on both ends. Bruce, we talked about this before, but what is it about this team that when you can go from a, a single to two possession ball game and all of a sudden within a minute or two it's twelve to fifteen point lead for your guys? Well, you know, we press and we, we, we do some things that we try to wear people down a little bit and we're you know you know, defense you can be defensive about something like, you know, not a very offensive, not very defensive, you know. Or you could try to dictate. You know, you could try with your defense to make it really hard to run your stuff. And that's what we try to do. And the guys recognize that they're gonna be able to create some offense from the defense and that's where your transition comes in. And so you get rewarded by making plays on the defensive end. Well, it you know it means a lot to me because I history means a lot to me. You know, it's not just it's not it, it doesn't mean as much to me personally as it does for me and my staff. You know, but I I would be lying if I didn't say that stuff that matters because I I talk about our team and our program and you know trying to hold up our end so on and so forth. I know also right now that. You know, we're probably going to continue to move in the rankings because, you know, it's conference play and people are going to lose. I don't think we're the 16th best team in the country right now. I think there are more than 16 teams better than we are. Um, you know, we were better than what they thought. We were better. We are better than what they thought. But we're not as good as they now think we are. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Bruce, you guys, 87% from the line. You shot 31 free throws in this game. This is on pace to be your best free throw shooting team in a while here. Just you know, how much has this crew specifically worked on 
being a good free throw shooting team and how much have you seen that kind of hard work pay off? You got to give all the credit goes to the players, all of it, all of it. Um, and you know the fact that my five men, uh, the key to being, you know, your guards, your guards are going to be great free throw shooters. The fact that Dylan and Janai are shooting the percentage that they're shooting, that's all the difference. And you're right, those guys have spent tireless hours in the gym. Last question, Mike. Uh, coach, since you've been a coach at Auburn, three other times you've started SEC play 3-0 and and you've gone on to win 25 or more games. What is it about getting a fast start in the SEC that allows you to, you know, win the rest of the season? Well, I mean, I could, I could go, well, we, we play two of the three games at home. Um, we did beat two of the top five teams preseason. I think both Texas A&M and Arkansas were preseason top five. Um, you know, but you know, you know, a lot of it has to do with just the schedule, and and where you, where they fall. So we just got to continue to take it one, you know, take it one at a time, and game plan and stay humble and stay hungry. Thanks,